Bourne. I am chairperson of the senior examiners here at the Royal Irish Academy of Music. Today I want to talk to you for a few minutes about the wrist staccato exercises which appear on the piano syllabus. The wrist staccato exercises are a progressive exercise. They appear on the syllabus for the first time at grade five um, as a staccato in thirds. For grade six then, they progress on to a staccato scale in six, and ultimately then for the higher grades, seven, eight, and senior certificate, they present as double octave scales. So for that reason, it's obviously hugely important to get the technique right from the get-go, so that the progression becomes as comfortable as possible for the student. So, as I mentioned before, the scales appear for the first time at grade five level, and they present as a staccato scale in thirds. It is hugely important that the student achieves a very loose wrist and maintains a very loose wrist throughout this exercise. So it is exactly the same technique as you would use if you were knocking on a door. So encourage the student to just pretend that they're knocking on a door, just so that they get used to this very supple wrist, this very loose wrist action. Building on from there then, the next uh, hurdle is hand position. And the fingers actually need to be quite firmly fixed in place. So if you were to flick the fingers, they're actually quite unyielding, they're quite fixed. Um, so you don't want too much wobbling going on at the piano. You want the position to be quite firm so that... ensuring a clean attack all the way. So the fingers have to be quite firm and as I say on yielding if you if you flick them or you know try to hit them and um, that they the position stays the same. And obviously the same technique is involved for the left hand as well even if I'm demonstrating with the right hand here follow exactly the same um, idea with the left hand as well. To begin with, I would encourage the student to repeat each chord three times. Etc. So that they just get really comfortable with the loose wrist and the hand position on top of that. Um, and also really try to ensure that they are playing very cleanly all the way. back down the same way again. Once the student is more comfortable with that, then obviously reduce the number. Instead of repeating each chord three times, get them to repeat it twice. Now, as you can hear, um, the sound I'm producing isn't flimsy. It's quite a firm, it's a confident sound. And that arises um, largely from that finger, that firm hand position that I'm talking about, that fixed hand position. Um, once the student is comfortable with playing it twice, then obviously you cut that back down again and they just play each note once. <laughs> Same thing for the left hand. Now, um, I want to stress to you at this point that this exercise is not an exercise in speed. That is not the goal here. And the tempo that I've just played there is really as fast as it should be. Um, it is more important that, I, as I said before, that they get the right technique, they have that loose wrist action, and that their attack is clean. Um, and my final piece of advice would be um, to encourage the student to keep as close contact with the keyboard as possible. Sometimes in exam situations, um, students will present this scale with a very exaggerated wrist movement. This type of thing. This type of wrist movement actually 
creates more tension than looseness. Um, so really better to try and keep closer contact with the keys. Also, the further away your hand comes from the keys, the less control you have over the keyboard and the more likely you are on your way down to hit notes that you don't want to. So to really ensure clean execution, try to keep close contact with the keys at all times. The technique for six uh, is exactly the same. Obviously the notes differ slightly. The hand position will be different because it's, you're in a, in a position for six instead of thirds. But again, you lock the fingers into that position so that, you know, they're again very firm. But the technique stays the same. And then ultimately at grade seven, when double octaves appear, you will hopefully get a nice clean execution every time. So thanks very much for listening. I hope this has been of some help to you. If you are looking for other tips, please have a look at the Local Centre Teaching Network website um, because there are lots more um, tips from different teachers um, for all sorts of different instruments, so it's really worth having a look at. Also, if you have any suggestions for things that you would like us to highlight, um, then please feel free to make contact with us. Thank you.